Hello, Ascent Nation, and welcome to the podcast. My name is Brian, and I'm going to be your host today. We're going to dive deep into a subject where really what we're talking about is committing to you or committing to yourself. And that means being more focused, more disciplined, and having that consistency. I have a great panel with me today. We're going to get into this, give you some of our stories of where we struggle, where we've had our challenges, and what we've done to overcome those things in our lives. So let's get into it. Well, good morning, Bridget, Chris. Welcome. So let's get into this. I think this is a very important topic that we want to talk about because when you talk about commitment to you or committing to yourself, it brings up sometimes a negative connotation with some people. So I wanted to throw this question out to you guys first and foremost, and that's to ask the question of when you do truly commit to yourself, where you're focused on you, your goals, your objectives, sometimes that means you have to block out other things and other people in your life, right? So you can stay on that journey and stay on that path as you work your way through it. How about you share a little bit of your experience? What do you think about this? Is that that being selfish? Is it being self-centered when you do this? Or is it just what it takes to actually accomplish that for yourself, to stay focused, to be disciplined, and to be consistent? Actually, the answer for me, the the unequivocal answer is no and no. Um, Honestly, I think... I was thinking about the when you we talked about this prior to uh, turning on the tape, turning on the tape, and when someone would say, you know, so basically, let's just say someone's calling you out on that. Um, the first thing you would typically do is the old, like the old me, the old Chris. I would go into defensive posture, you know, automatically defending myself, and the reality is, there's nothing to defend. Um, you have to be selfish um, in order to uh, truly be able to attain your goals. Um, Cause the reality is you're the only one that's going to put it typically going to put in the lion's share of the work. So if that means that um, and a lot of, a lot of times what, when people are saying that you're selfish, it's really about them saying you're not available as you were before. Um, I just had a conversation yesterday with uh, our other uh, pro- uh, podcast partner, Vinny, and that was what he was being accused of uh, to, to be namely, actually, the person said he was an asshole. And he said, what? And I said, he said, I said, what do you mean? I said, and I, and I immediately, the funny part was I immediately thought, I said, oh, you're not as available as you were before. And this person is used to the, avail- the unfettered availability of you and your time. And that's what a lot of times what really people are saying to you is, I could get to you when I, at any time I wanted to before, and now your, the, your availability has become selective. Well, that's by design, because basically what we're talking about is when we're talking about adding new goals into our, our respective lives, we're talking about taking up more time for this new and hopefully uh, exciting cause or, um, you know, goals that you're trying to reach to. So that, that has to happen. I mean, it's, 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 it's necessary, you know, there's no way around it. You can't, you know, cause here's, here's the reality. When I'm on a new path, Brian's on a new path. I'm not sure what you guys are on, but we're both on new paths. So it is requiring an addition. It's requiring additional brain power. It's requiring additional time. Um, it's re- requiring additional thought. And there's a lot of challenges with that. Just like you mentioned in the, you know, during the uh, pre-production, Brian, that you were having a lot of challenges. Well, as as you know, we we've discussed this a gazillion times on a, on a gazillion different subjects. Challenges are everyday part of our lives. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't get around them. Whatever whatever they whatever it is, you're going to run into some type of a challenge. Whether it's another person, whether it's the situation that you're trying to um, interject and and make a part make a part of your everyday life, there's going to be challenges. I mean. Uh, I mean, I, I I got a list as long as my arm of, of challenges you're going to encounter from day to day. And that doesn't mean it's going to be an everyday thing, but they're going to be different challenges each and each, each, each day that you, that you wake up. So um, mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. I'm at a point now where I'm not saying that I'm just okay with my challenges, but I've gotten used to the fact that the challenges are just a part of the process. And the easier I've transitioned through those challenges 
or at least from a standpoint of trying to understand what my challenges are, the the easier it be, it, it I don't think it ever gets a hundred percent easy, but the but the transitions are a little a little less um, um, intrusive. Understood. I agree. Thank you for sharing that, Chris. And that's very true because challenge is always going to be there. Bridget, I know we've talked about this quite a bit, um, just about what you have to do. And like you said, I know we had conversations like matching energies and, and just many different things. So tell me a little bit about how your perspective on when you do get into this mode in life and you're on a journey of trying to accomplish some specific things. Is that being selfish or is that being self-centered or is it just what's necessary to get it done? Um, all of the above. Yes, this is absolutely selfish. And so what? I am thinking of me. I am thinking of my outcome. I'm thinking of the goal in, at hand. Oh, I'm, I, I'm absolutely being selfish. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. And, and that's necessary as well. And it's self-centered because right now that's who I'm considering. So the, it's all of, all above, and it's not a negative thing. Um, you know, sometimes, and if you look up the dictionary of selfish, it's just thinking of, about, about oneself. And so, but we've added a definition to it, thinking about oneself and nobody else. And that's not necessarily true. You can think, sometimes you have to put yourself above that at all. And, you know, you and I have talked, there has been plenty of times that I put myself down and I didn't even know if I, if I was even in the equation. Um, when I stopped and looked at everything that was going on. So, and, and I've talked about matching energy. And since I've done that, matching energy has been one of my mantras because, oh my God, when you start to think about yourself only, you you see so many different things through a, through a different, through different eyes. You see who your real friends are. You see who your, how many is in your, how many are actually in your circle. You see how, how your family feels about you. Most importantly, you see how how you feel about everybody else. Sean, what are your what's your perspective on that? I think it's important that we get obviously, as I'm gonna call it, the yin and the yang, and that's why I like having both male and female guests on here because it gives us an opportunity to hear both sides of that. So, Sean, what are, what are your thoughts? Well, I'm gonna go, you know, take the hard left here, and I'm gonna say it's not um, not selfish. Um, what happens is we have to learn how to understand the words that we're using and understand that selfish is you putting yourself above someone else. But what we're talking about is self priority, prior, prioritization. So we're no longer putting people above us. I think we've been um, conditioned that ourselves last and put people ahead of us. But when we're looking at, you know, changing our lives, changing our situations about ourselves, we have to put ourselves above because the old saying says, treat your neighbor as yourself. But if you treat yourself second best, you're going to treat everyone else second best. And that gets us in a whole, you know, heap of trouble. So it's important that we understand first how to self love before we can love someone else. We have to first learn how to understand ourselves if we're going to understand others. Um, so priority, not selfish is understanding that, Hey, like Chris alluded to, Hey, I'm just putting my, we're just going to reshuffle the deck a little bit. I'm not putting you, whoever it is, it doesn't matter. Whoever it is, we're not putting you in front of me because, you know, we are each the center of our own universes and it's improper and very problematic when we put other people, um, and their universe in front of us, because that's everything. Every, just think about that, everything. You're the center of the universe, so everything that, that everyone else is going on around you is in front of you. And so yourself and your life view through someone else's lens, and that's how we get so askewed and off our own paths and away from what our, our chosen destiny should be. So that prioritization, putting yourself at the pinnacle of your thought, um, when you start and end your day, it's not selfish. It's just understanding that I need to love myself, understand myself, and guide myself. Because as they say, who's coming? <laughs> no one's coming to save you. That's your job, and you have to take care of you first before you can take care of anyone else. Just like on the airplane, put your mask on first. Yeah. Child, put your wife, put everyone else's masks on when the air pressure in the cabin starts to fall. So we need to take that same stewardess advice for our own lives 
put your own mask on first and then treat everyone else. 100% agree with you on that. So let me throw something else on the table is this is a really good discussion. And, and let's talk about people in our lives, right? And how they may see or perceive these things when you have, and Chris, you just gave an example about someone who a uh, common friend with Benny and how someone kind of attacked him based on how they were feeling. That's probably happened to us all, especially when we do change or shift from a norm that people around us may have been used to. And now we have taken this different path and different approach. And when those things happen, what have been some of the things that you have done to work, to work your way through that? Uh, is it just a cold hand saying, talk to the hand, it really doesn't matter? Or do you actually take some time to try to explain what it is that's going on and why things are going to be different? Chris, what about you? I'll start with you on that question. Well, it just, one of the things it depends on is where are you in my ecosystem? So what do you, what, do, what do you actually mean to me? And, and I'll be honest with you, you know, I'm a giver. Um, I'm a acts of service type of, a, of a personnel. Um, so in general, if you're, if you, if you, if you somehow touch my universe, then there's a certain caring aspect that I have towards all human beings. I've had to learn how to, to turn that up, turn that down the volume up on on those things and, and realize where, what is your place with me? Now, some folks like, you know, present company included those people that are my inner circle, you know, we all have an inner circle, you know, I've got 10, 15 people that are somewhat, you know, that dance on the inner circle. And those people, when I encounter those types of situations, I take the time to explain it to them. And most of them are, they're like, we're, we're all like-minded people. So they, they get it real quick. I don't have to go through a bunch of gyrations to get to, to make my point. Um, someone on the, say on the more on the periphery, I may take a little bit of time, but I'm not going to take a lot of time. So I'm going to, I'm going to see if you get it. And if you don't, I might take another swing at you. And if you can't get it after swing two, we got problem. Well, you got a problem. I don't have a problem. That's a you problem. It's not a me problem. And I, and I, I learned to keep it. Mo- I've learned to keep it moving because I realized that that is, in the past has been one of my Achilles that I worried about what somebody else's feelings were. You know what I mean? That's your feelings. That's not my feelings. So I've had to, condition myself not to be so so feely you know i'm just a feely person and i've had to strengthen that emotion in me to like dude you're more upset about it than they are <laughs> you know what i mean so uh i've, I've been really working on that i mean that kind of comes along with the aspect of um you know the power remember the power of the no, power of no mm-hmm. you know those things because i, I you know, have to still have to practice that every day um but you know i'm like I said, I'm in heavy change mode right now. So I have to economize my time. I have to try to get more mileage out of my time, energy, and emotion. So that means I got to dial it down for certain situations, certain folks. You, you, I'm going to be less accessible to you. Um, in your case, Brian, it ain't that I don't want to talk to you because you know I do, but we we kind of have we've kind of have this yin and yang between us where, you know, if I don't hear from you or you don't hear from me in three or four days, we're hey you know, mic check, mic check type situation. And as long as you respond with the right things, boom, we keep it, we keep it pushing to, Hey, we'll get back to you on the weekend. And then we can actually have an actual conversation. Uh, And I like that because, you know, part of this thing and what, and I, I, I'm sure we'll get to it in the, as we kind of delve deeper in this is having the support of like-minded people on your journey of life. It is a necessary uh, aspect that you have support. You don't have to have everybody's support, but there are a few key people that I got to have your support. You know, there's three to five folks that for me to succeed at what I'm trying to do. And and typically those three to five people want you to succeed anyway. So they're going to actually do whatever it is you've asked them to do in support of your goal. But understanding you've got to ask. Sometimes you just got to ask because everybody's got their own thing they're doing. You know, you, Brian, you're not sitting around waiting for me to ask for your support. You know, you're doing your thing. But if I ask for your support, I'm going to typically get it. That's right. Absolutely. So, Bridget, uh, because I know we've talked 
uh, a little bit about just your history and you starting your nonprofit and all these other things. And I'm sure there were people in your circle that, you know, well, isn't teaching enough? Why do you want to go start this thing? And then why do you want to go do that? And why do you want to put that on your plate? So what were some of those conversations like and how did you navigate your way through that? Well, as you know, <clears throat> I, I I went into a recovery for people pleasing um, and um, and was healed from it. And yes, I have had many seasons of doing so many things, you know, school, then nonprofit, then teaching, then this and that. And it, it, if you don't know me, it's pretty hard to keep up and you will question, okay, so you, you're doing too much. You know, that was the thing I was doing too much. And then I didn't really know myself either. So since I was trying to please people and do a lot, then I was just all over the place. But when I kind of settled down and came to myself um, and start to know myself, and then I gathered the circle of friends with, that were like-minded. And then those that were not like-minded, like family. Family not is not going to always be like-minded. But um, I cared about them. So when I started to become myself and I started to be myself, the people that came along with me kind of knew how I roll, basically, you know, when it's my season for something, I may have to step back for a while. And if you know, and then I'll come back. And so I will explain, hey, I'm gonna have to do this for a minute. So I may not be able to do this. I'm not available for this. And then that's I don't take a whole lot of time on it. Because you, if you know my history, I mean, I'm talking about not you, I'm talking about anybody, if you know my history, when I when I um go after a goal, I'm persistent about it. And so nothing's going to stop me. So I may have to put it aside, put you for, or, or anything else aside for a while. So the, what I say in always, um, those who matter don't mind and those who mind don't matter. Amen, Amen to that. Yeah. 100%. Wow. wow. Sean, <laughs> that, that's tough one to follow my friend, but let, let me, what are your thoughts? Man, that is a tough one to follow, but I, I'll tell you what, understand about you know i like what chris said about you know who's who's in your orbit who's in your atmosphere and you know family's always always there and we need to understand that families tend to have a hive mind you know they you know they've grown up with you through your life um and they have a certain space set for you okay there's certain roles that you've grown up with i have a i have a large family um so you know, I'm big brother to some, little brother to some. I'm, I wear a lot of hats, you know, in that space. And what I've had, I have to understand where people hold space for us in their lives as well. You know, a lot of people want you to be the center, want them to be the center of your life as well. They want to be number one. They want you to hold them as number one. And they have you on the shelf in their life and in their mind as well. Um, by your patterns and the things that you've interacted with them with and so when you change what they're saying when they give you uh, some feedback is saying hey you're no longer fitting in the box that i had and now it's disrupting my shelf it's not even about you it's it's all about them so when we're talking about selfishness i would you know say that it's on that person being selfish because they're saying hey you can't change because you're affecting what's going on in my life. And if we are then gonna caveat and pivot back to them, then we have done ourselves the hugest disservice ever. And I find that it is very hard, the closer people are to you sometimes to explain what change is because a lot of people just are not ready in change. Um, they may not have the same um, convictions that you are because we all have different, uh, travels um, in our lives, different paths we've gone down. So my experience is not going to be what Chris has been. So when I, when I, when I hit the wall, you know, Chris might still be cruising, you know, and might not see, have, he have, hasn't got to the mountaintop and seen and seen the other side, you know, but, you know, when we each get to that precipice and see, hey, something's got to change in our lives, only, we're only responsible, you know, to ourselves in, in that. So, you know, educating those that are around you that you care to educate uh, can be a bit daunting um, because a lot of times when we're going through these changes, we're talking about life principles, things that we have been taught and conditioned to 
from the time we were children, infants and toddlers, that you're asking them to wrap their minds around these big um, ideas and ideals that you now have that do not coincide with what they have. And families, especially, again, with that hive mind, so because if it was that way, we would all feel that way because, you know, prior to this, we've always been on the same page. So it must be you, the free electron, that's going the wrong way. And I'm always being pulled back in. No, don't go there. Oh, you might want to pray about that. Um, yeah, I don't think that's really what you're supposed to be doing. And, you know, you have to educate them that, hey, you know, this might not be what you think or how you live, but this is what works for me. And we all have our own space in life. I enter my lens. You interpret it through your lens. I'm not trying to put this on you, but for me. And if you want to be in my orbit, this is kind of where I am. Yeah. So you have, um, I'd say, a gradient, Brian, between the talk to the hand, <laughs> the cold shoulder, and then the and the loving embrace. So you have to find the person, the people along your path, those that are saying, oh, well, you know, anything that you're doing that's going to better yourself, I'm all for it and I'll support you all the way to the far end where, there, where you have people that say, no, I'd rather you stay in your place, you know, and not that I have in my life in the position that you sit. So um, we need to continue to put ourselves and elevate ourselves and just tell them, understand that I'm elevating myself. I'd love for you to come along with me. It's a beautiful ride, but I'm not gonna allow you to sandbag me and hold me back either. So I think it's always a conversation that you're gonna come around to over and over again for people that you run into over and over again in your network and in your um, outlook. So general consensus, I think across the board is definitely not selfish or being self-centered and really a necessity for you to be able to achieve and accomplish the goals and objectives that you've set for yourself in life and to care for yourself, right? So I wanna shift gears a little bit. I wanna go back to the other word that's part of what we're talking about today, and that's commitment, right? So I really wanna get into this and you know, hear your perspective when we talk about commitment. What does commitment mean to you? Well, how do you go about truly committing to something and then what's the driver or the motivators generally for us individually because i want to it's going to be different for different people so i think our audience will gain something from hearing our different perspectives because again it's a big word it's a broad word it's used in a lot of niche and cliche ways so chris i'll start with you someone says how committed you are or why are you committed to this or get committed to that what are your thoughts on that and, and when it, with regards to being committed or getting committed to something? That's a very layered um, nuance. Let's say, let's call it that. Um, the thing about commitment is there is so much on the back end that's required to actually be committed to. Some, I mean, there's easy things to get committed to. You know, I'm, I'm committed to waking up every morning and brushing my teeth and bathe, and bathing, you know, that that's a commitment I made, you know, as a youngster, you know, I can do that. I can almost do that in my sleep, even though I'm not asleep. Um, but I, I find commitment has a, uh, for me, it has a lot of routines involved to it. Um, a lot of, uh, habits that have to be formulated, um, and it requires a lot of discipline. Um, and that, that's something that, and let me, let me put a parentheses around the front of that, a lot of self discipline, self commitment, things of that nature. And I'll be honest with you, it's easier said than done, depending on what, where you are in your, in your space, in your mind, or where you are on the list. I wrote, when I was jotting down notes for this, this podcast, and, I, and let me preface, I've been having migraines all freaking week. And I think it's because I'm in, I'm involved in a new opportunity right now. And, and I'm kind of, you, 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 Brian, you know me, I'm, I self pressurize. So I put, you don't have to put pressure on me. I'm going to do it all by myself. <laughs> so I've been, I've been battling, I've been battling these migraines all week because I'm this new venture and we'll get into that a little bit later, um, has really been tearing me a new one. 
because I'm I'm literally truly trying to find a new level to commit commit myself to something that I'm very that's very passionate to me um, that's going to be also very beneficial to me on on a, on a lot of levels um, up and including financially. Um, so how I started the pro my process of kind of doing my little notes this morning when I when I went to bed last night and woke up was I started out um, goals start out as ideas and then they go into lists and then at some point along the way they turn into goals. Now along that wet along that pr that process that uh, line, um, you've got to incorporate um, some some really great habits. You know, I, we talked about this a, a couple of months, a few months ago, how, um, and I'll try to make this quick, quick. Um, when I started on the path that I'm on, and I didn't even know that I was going to end up on the path that I'm actually on, I, I, it just morphed into something kind of different, which is, and that's another podcast all in itself. But um, I won, I woke up and realized I'm a, I'm a gym guy. I, you know, you know, Brian, you'll never go to, Brian, you don't go to gyms. I'm a gym guy. It's, it's something that I, I have to have, um, and, and, and it represents it represents good physical health for me, but it also rep represents a commitment to self and and good physical fitness. And I think that a lot of people um, they really downplay that's that significance and importance, as, especially as you age. So the idea that I'm get that I get up at X hour and go to to put into this physical laborious activity and it's more and honestly it's it's 50 50 it's mental and physical but the fact that i have now real i've now reincorporated this and i've been on this journey that's been one of the journeys for me that i've been on that since the beginning of the year that i've gotten consistent i'm, I'm four to five days a week in the gym on average on a minimum of an hour to and if schedule permitting i'm two hours in the gym and it's something that I actually now don't even think about as long as nothing gets in, in nothing. I allow anything to get in my way and I work my schedules correctly. I'm there. And it's just one of those things that I have to get done in the course of my day. And it moves me to the next phase of whatever it is I got going on right now, which is a, a lot of learning. I'm learning how to be this. Um, I'm, I'm actually, I'm in, I'm basically getting into tech education so, and I'm working with high schoolers. So, but it is a hard pivot versus running my own company and dealing with customers and things like that. It is challenging beyond challenging right now because I'm in, a, I'm having to be it while learning it simultaneously. And I'm, and, and it's, and I'm, and right now I'm fortunate that because we're doing an inaugural class that I'm actually doing more learning than I am teaching where my, the heavy emphasis for me today is, is on the mentoring. So that's where I'm right now. I'm making my most, um, I'm having my most amount of impact is on mentoring this inaugural class of, uh, graduating high schoolers in the tech space. Excellent. Bridget, what about you? I know we've talked about commitment and, you know, the commitment that it takes and to, to stay on track. So what, what, are, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, um, commitment has always been twofold for me because I'm, I've always been the act of service. So in that right, you have to be committed to what you set out. You have to not only be committed to what you set out, but the people that you are um, affecting, you, you have to be committed to them. And so that way, um, and, and when I say twofold, but then that weighs heavy on your commitment to yourself. Cause then you have to make sure you get enough sleep. You have to make sure you do these things for yourself. So how do you do both when you commit committed to yourself and to someone else or to another group of people? So in act, in terms of active service, um, my word pretty much weighs a lot on what I do. If I tell the girls, I mentor teen girls. If I tell them I'm going to do something, even if I don't put it on paper or not, then I have to be committed to doing that. And they depend on that. And at first I didn't realize it because, you know, I raised children, you know, 
you say we're going to go to the park and the day, the, the day you don't feel like going to the park, we're not going to the park, you know, and why? Cause I said so, I, you know, and, and you just change to something else. But when you're out and serving the public or you serving teen girls or wherever you're in, the, whatever field you're in, you have to be committed to what you say and your personality, your behavior, how you show up has to be consistent. And that was, it wasn't, it was hard at first, but when, once I got it, the light bulb went off. Like, these people depend on you to be with who you say you are and to do what you say you're going to do. Then I didn't have a problem with committing, and it wasn't hard for me anymore. And so then that filtered over to my commitment for myself because now I know how to stay committed. And I know when I say something, I'm, I'm going to think about it before I say it. I'm going to think about what I'm really going to do before I tell these girls what I'm really going to do. Are you really going to do this, Bridget? So don't tell them this if you're not. So I did the same with myself. You know, are you going to make, you got to make realistic goals with yourself. Don't say you're going to do this, lose 20 pounds by the summer and you know it's March. Um, you got to be realistic about the goals. And so that's how I look at commitment now. I, um, I before I plan out, you know, I, I, I mentor teen girls. And before I plan out my, my, my quarterly schedule and I do every three months, I look at what's going to be realistic for me and for them. And I never give out a calendar that I know I'm not going to be able to produce. And what has happened over the years, because I've been doing this, this is my fifth year now. What has happened over the years, I've scaled back a lot because my commitment to myself was fighting the commitment who was versus the commitment I made to the, to the organization. So I had to scale back some, cause it was, some of those goals were not realistic. It was what I wanted to do and I saw we could do it, but it was also affecting me as well. So I had to scale back on some things. So commitment is very important to me, but it also showed me, um, it also taught me how to be um, consistent with other people and not just change your mind all the time. And I was used to doing that because I raised kids and, and I could do that. I'm the parent, but you know, when you're serving others, you can't just be all willy nilly, you know, next month we're going to do this. And then you know, I thought we were going to do this. And I saw in the first year, I saw that I was changing it because I was used to changing my mind. And I saw the girls saying, well, I thought we were going to, you told us. And I was like, well, I didn't think they was going to remember that. Um, but I'm like, oh, yeah, I did say that. OK, so we're going to stay to this calendar. And so I had to go back and say, Bridget, you got to be have to be consistent with your work because people are watching and they're listening to what you're saying and they're paying attention. And so if you're serving them, the one thing that they may have in their life is you being consistent. They may not have anything else in their life consistent. So um, that's what commitment means to me. And that's how it has affected me over the years. Thanks for sharing that, Bridget. You know, that, that's a very important piece of it. I think the commitments to, as we're talking about now, to self and understanding at some point, what's realistic? What can I actually realistically accomplish? And obviously, a lot of times we'll throw a lot on our plates initially as we because we feel gung ho and I can get it done and I can manage it all. But then that's when you really start to have to pare it back based not on, on what's realistic and also what's really important what are the priorities and being able to prioritize i think a lot better is also a, a big piece of it i think commitment for me when i when i hear that term it, it really is about and sean kind of hit it i mean and chris kind of hit it on the head a little bit talking about self uh discipline right because that's a big piece of i think being committed to something is how self-disciplined are you to stay on track with the thing, whatever the, the thing is. And I think that's a, the, the most valuable piece of it. But then that goes back to, again, getting past our initial first hurdle. And that's what we talked about that first is the being selfish and being self-centered because the only way I think it can truly be completely self-disciplined is to get that first piece un under control, right? Where you do feel comfortable being in your own space, being responsible for self, driving things based on it being you, right? It was an important piece of it. So I want to ask an additional question. Um, obviously, we talked a lot about overcoming the different obstacles that get thrown at us. But how do you then stay motivated, right? Because there's always going to be ebbs and flows as you work your way through it. And, you know, Bridget, you mentioned you've been doing this for five years. And we've talked here or there along the way and just trying to figure out, you know, am I doing the right thing or do I need to change and go a different direction or should I pivot and these types of things? And when that's happening, how are we staying motivated 
along that line to be able to do that. So Bridget, how about you share a little bit about your journey as far as staying on track and keeping that positive mindset? Um, looking at the big picture and celebrating the small wins. Um, and I know we've talked over the years and I, I've always kind of have, well, let maybe the first three years second guess what I was doing in terms of mentoring and teaching too for <laughs> even now. But um, just celebrating the small wins. So, and, and I've learned that over the years, I've, I've always, you know, I've talked to you about the uh, quality, the quantity of people the quantity of girls that show up or the quantity of people that do this. And, 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 you know, and I told you maybe three or four years ago, you know, a lady spoke to me and said, don't worry about the number. The person that's supposed to be there is there. It is going to be there. So I, I celebrate the small wins and I avoid the negative talk. Even the negative talk is in my head. And I have to almost say it out loud, Bridget, that's not true because look, this is what happened before. So I go back to my past and I look at what has happened before and what has worked before. And then I, I celebrate the small wins in the present and I avoid the distraction. I avoid the negative talk, the negative distraction. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, I know we did talk about that because I remember there was a period where, you know, you were having one girl show up or two girls show up and you were like, man, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Why is, why is nobody here? But, and that's so crazy because it's already interrupted so crazy because even now back then those girls are out of high school and it was maybe 20 girls or 15 girls were supposed to show up and maybe five girls showed up or maybe next time seven girls showed up and so those five girls having being out of high school now into college and some are in the workforce I, I'm still closely connected to those people to those girls so those are the girls that needed what I was there to serve and what my purpose was. And even in, in, even in school, I'm a teacher, but I'm a special education teacher. So I have a small group of kids that I do um, cater to it and that I teach and instruct and case manage. And sometimes it's always, it for me, it's like, okay, they're not getting it. And then at the end of the year, or maybe in the middle of the year, in my case, just last week, one student will show you or, or do something that makes you know let you know you are you are helping him or her that one student out of all these students you're like i'm not doing anything and then one student will show you or, or their parent will talk to you or give you a gift card or whatever it is to show you yeah you're making a difference mm -hmm. um so i no longer look at the, the what's going on right there i always look at the big picture in my why very good very good now chris um we have you've had a journey and you know i know your journey well um so let's talk about how you let's right at that ship and where did you find the motivation to you know to do that where did that come from and and how you think our audience can benefit from what your experience has been over the last few years if we're talking about purely motivation um there are days when you wake up super super easy I mean, you just, I mean, you're just brimming with confidence. You're just brimming with energy. It's the days when you're not, that's when you've got to really kind of look at things. You got to dig in deep. Um, I think part of that part of the, what's part of that process is reassessment. So reassessing where you are in, in the journey per se, because it's always going to be some kind of a journey. Let's, let's be realistic about that. There's going to be some journey. If we are who we are, and if we're honest with ourselves, there is always some journey, some mountain to climb, some obstacle to to uh, to to um, to to get to get around. Um, so for me, um, I do a lot of I have a lot of little mental tricks that I've that I've put into my process, even as even down to my workouts. Um, I go to matter of fact, some of the best workouts I have. Or when I'm dead dog tired, really don't want to go, had no interest when I woke up. My first thought was I'm laying on the couch. I ain't moving. Um, and I'm like, but no, that's not what we're here for today. You have a, you know, then I, then you, you re almost, then you remind yourself, I have a goal. Like, let's just use my fitness as a challenge. Brian, you know, I gained 30 pounds when I had the tumor on my cornea last year and i was relegated to the house for four months because uh, i couldn't be in sunlight 
And um, I just keep telling myself, and I also have a scale sitting over here, and, and I keep telling myself, this is where I'm trying to, this is where I want to go. Um, and I've actually, I've actually redefined that goal over the course of it. Cause I've dropped 25 pounds, by the way, Bridget, I heard you talking about weight loss. I've dropped 25 pounds in the last uh, four months. And um, so literally I actually have hit the first goal. I've actually, I've actually readjusted the goal down even further. I got another 10. I'm trying to get, it's going to be probably the most difficult 10 pounds I've ever lost in my life but I am committed to it because I know I can get in my mind, my sick little mind. I know I can get there. It's, and I won't let go. I, if you know anything about me, I'm, if I get something in my head and I truly believe it, believe it, believe it. I don't let go until I get there. I don't care how long it's going to take me to get there. Um, Brian, you and I talked about what I'm this track I'm on with this new teaching situation. And I, and I, what I started to do was, Obviously, there is a long term goal, but what I've had to do is look at I've had to actually put it on a long scale. One one week, one month, two months, three months, six months, one year, five years, 10 years. You almost have to. And I don't you I don't abdicate you look, looking completely down 10 years, but you've got to look at it in steps and start to formulate in your mind where you think you should, and I, I, act, I underline where you think you should be on these incremental steps. You may have to come back later on and readjust those where you think you should be. because, And in most, in most cases, you probably are gonna have to readjust. But the whole point is, it's about progress. You know what I mean? We can, you can amp it up, you can dial it down. You can amp it up, you can dial it down. And Brian, you know, my famous, well, not so famous, but I think it's famous. Progress isn't measured in distance. It's measured in progress. Mm -hmm. So I always keep that in the forefront of my mind, especially when I'm having difficult days when I don't think I'm doing anything. Because there are days you're like, I'm not getting nothing done today. I'm stuck, mm -hmm. you know, I'm stuck in mud. And then you say, no, 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 no. Let's just get one thing right today one thing and that will propel me forward and i've used those are the mechanisms that i use now especially when i'm being challenged and realize most of the challenges are in my head nobody's doing anything to me nobody's putting up an actual roadblock in front of me it's me mm -hmm. and it's always going to be the proverbial me yep. and i think that's where people get tripped up in life is and they get frustrated and they don't know what to do with it because they don't realize they don't have that mechanism that they've developed that says this is on me you know granted you're gonna have people out here that uh that block you you know what i mean and you have to figure out how to get and when this goes back to we have to get those people we move them out of our universe when we discover that they're that they're blockers you know what mm -hmm. i mean and that's just who they are you know, you, you know, I don't spend a lot of time, you know, when I figure out somebody's a blocker, I don't spend a lot of energy wondering why they're a blocker. They're just a blocker. Okay. I got to keep it moving. I got to keep it pushing. Um, one other thing I, I want to say from, I can't remember whether it was uh, uh, you, Sean, or you, Bridget, and we were talking about um, people, people get comfortable seeing you where they're comfortable seeing you. And the moment you decide that you're going to step out of that position, you talk about bruised and, and bad feelings and, and, and people showing you their true colors that hate, they start really sipping the hater aid. Mm -hmm. I had to learn. That's a very valuable lesson. I had to learn in my early thirties that people loved seeing me where they, where they thought that I was controllable. And the moment I started breaking those chains and deciding I wanted to be a little bit more or I wanted a little bit more from my life, you know, for whatever the reason may be, people got just got ill with me. And I and I was not very quick to identify those people. Um, and more importantly, when I did, I used to get really mad. That's not changing them. They're not going to change. They're going to keep. Matter of fact, they might even double down. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And really kind of lean into, the, you know, the whole gaslight theory of, oh, that's not me. And I, I want the best for you. 
Well, your actions weren't showing me that. So now, I, you know, the old adage is real G's move in silence. Mm -hmm. I don't even acknowledge it anymore. I just, hey, what's up, brother? You get a pound and I keep and I keep my program moving. You know what I mean? So, Sean, let's talk about uh, motivation and staying motivated at, through all of the roadblocks, hurdles, mountains, people, whatever it might be. How do you stay on your path? How you stay on your path? I, I think it becomes down to the terminology that we use uh, when we use the word commitment. Um, when we use the word commitment, usually we're talking about uh, our most familiar um, term is in um, in a relationship, a co-committed relationship, um, marriage or something of that nature. And it puts a very um, external locus of control on in, in the boundary um, when we're talking about commitment um, and makes it very much okay. Um, but for me, I believe commitment is more of a, a broader ideal that simply says, um, I have um, located something that I'm going to attach myself to, and I'm going to stay um, focused on and, and true to that. Okay. Um, so when we're talking about um, motivation, uh, Chris went through a, a great, a great spiel about, you know, the ups and downs of those things. Um, but we have to understand that just like you have good days in the gym and bad days in the gym, um, same uh, fluctuation, undulation with everything that you're doing in, in life. Um, so when you say I'm committed to A, B, C, or D, that doesn't mean that every day I'm going to hit the bullseye. I'm going to even get close to the target. But what that means is that even if I don't get up and make it to the gym, Chris, at five o'clock, and you know eight o'clock rolls around all that means is that my commitment says hey i've had this self-talk with myself that says hey what happened why didn't i hit the target and it's a constant recommit it's an up and down you know it turns people away often because when they, when they fall off the horse they don't understand that fall stop and start fall and get back up is life is that that circle of life is in everything. So motivation means I'm gonna get back up and keep shooting forward towards this goal, no matter if I hit the bullseye, if I fall short, um, if I don't even get off the couch. Matter of fact, I don't even have to wait till tomorrow. I can just change it in my mind right now that, hey, man, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get there today, but I'm setting it in my mind at this very second right now that I'm still on the glide path for it. So we don't have to wait to the next day to say, hey, I'm going to get up and go to the gym tomorrow. No, we set that, that, that mindset. It's called mindset. We're setting the focus right then at five o'clock the day before That's, that sets the intention for the next day. Um, so if we reset our intention, every day throughout the day those downs because i tell you what even when you have a high that you that you that you made your goal you still have to set that same goal again the next day but i'm going to do it because there's no carryovers in life every day is new every experience is new so that's your commitment that's your motivation and it has to come from internal that why that chris was talking to i have a why i have a health goal i have a fitness goal i have a career goal uh, Bridget wants to uh, have a relationship with these girls. That that's her that's her goal, and that why is large enough and encompassing can move her from states of stagnation in, when she's feeling sedentary, even in her energy and in her spirit, to get her moving back forward on that glide path toward the goal that she wants to get and stay on the continuum. It's a continuum. It is not a flip the switch light on light off it's a continuum of growth and grace that we have to encourage and um embolden ourselves with every day so sean you hit on uh, several things and i want to i want to go back to this because i think it's important to our discussion a couple of things that i pulled out of it one of the most important things you stated there is what's the why what's your why understanding what's your why when you talk about staying motivated so what is the true why behind it and i think the key is and this is something we talked about in an earlier podcast your why really needs to be tied back to 
the first thing we talked about in today's episode, and that is self and what it is that is truly your why not what the world and the universe and your wife and your mom and your dad and whoever else. I'm not saying those people are not important and that they, that they don't matter because they do. But if you truly want to be committed to something and stay motivated through the challenges that are going to come, that why needs to really be rooted deep in you. So finding out what that is, I think is an important piece. Second thing you mentioned, Sean, is to, just basic action. Take action, right? And then that's the other piece of it. And as you said, some days you'll hit the target. Some days you'll miss the target a little bit. Some days you might not hit the side of the barn. You'll be so far off target. But the whole point is you still continue to take the action. And I think that's a key piece of it. One thing I want to throw back on the table and kind of get everybody's input on this is how about accountability just in general? Where does the accountability fall in your opinions when we talk about commitment, commitment to self and following through on the things. Is that accountability just you or is it external things that you should be accountable to or is it a hybrid of those different things? So Chris, I'll come to you first and say, what are your thoughts when you talk about where the accountability lies and what are the better ways to track and maintain being accountable? <clears throat> Well, I think initially accountability, it, it, it lies at home. So the initial accountability lies with me. Beyond that, it's my word. So in, in my case, I'm involved with an organization who sees something. We, we kind of have a co-commitment thing kind of going on. A co accountability was well, a co commitment and co accountability type situation going on. Um, and it's funny, I was thinking because I just had, I, I, I had at to date, I, I had one of what I call my one of my roughest weeks. Um, I thought about this this morning. I have lived, you know, we're here in Hawaii and I, I've lived my life in about a 15 mile vacuum. I mean, literally, my radius is about 15 miles. Well, now uh, I'm involved with this this tech center that I'm having to go. I'm going to three days a week that requires a 35 mile one way drive to go to this tech center. So can you imagine all the stuff that I got on my plate that I'm trying to do my gym, my workout, my, you know, trying to study driving 35 miles. And it's and, and if you know anything about Hawaii traffic, it ain't fun. Uh, mm -hmm. worse than almost as bad as California. Um, so there's the physical challenge of that while keeping my mind fresh on the, the task at hand, going in three hours of classroom um, and in the 35 mile drive back. Literally, this, this is week three. And I got into week. So the first day I was like, eh. and I got into the second week and I got into the second day and I'm like, bruh, is this really what you want to do? <laughs> I mean, I'm like, cause that drive is just, it's brutal. You know, it, it's, it's brutal. And I immediately, when I was going through my whole kind of my little thought process, I said, this is God's way of actually testing your accountability mm -hmm. and seeing if you're really going to be accountable to this, or you're going to figure out some kind of excuse to not follow through on this and follow through on everything that you said that you wanted to do. More importantly, you said you wanted to, you want, you said this to yourself. I didn't say it to somebody. I said it to somebody else, but I started out saying it to myself. And I think that that's part, a huge part of being accountable is being accountable to oneself to begin with. And then you, then the accountability piece of whoever it is that you are involved with or, or you're supporting that it can't be a fair weather type situation where on, it's a good day I'm in, it's a bad day I'm not. Um, I committed to something that it, that's truly in my heart of hearts. The reality is it ain't easy right now. And it's in and, and what everything I want is on the other, other side of hard right now. So this is going to be, I'm kind of sit, sitting into the fact that I'm going to have to work on this on a lot of levels for the foreseeable couple of, well, we graduate our first class in July, I believe. 
and I'm setting the goal that, you know, cause I got to get certified. I got to do all this other stuff. So I'm, I got that bogey out there. It says, all right, Chris, relax. Yes. It's going to be tough. Yes. There are going to be days when you're not going to be really, really stoked, but down deep, you're going to be excited and motivated because you're actually making a difference. But I'm, what I'm trying to get at is being accountable is not an easy task. It's, you know, it's for a lot of people, it's a buzzword. And if you don't know how to truly um, attach yourself, marry yourself to it, then you, you'll, you know, I guess at the end of the day, I'm, this is about giving on another level that I knew that's, that's in me. I just didn't know it was going to, it was going to have, it was going to be called into play. So, um, like I said, it's a test every day right now, but Mm -hmm. I, I I just keep reminding myself of what the goal is, where I want to be and ultimately what good feelings I get out of it. And that's what keeps me going. Focus on the rewards, right? Absolutely. Celebrate those rewards. Bridget, what about you? I know we've talked a little bit about this uh, accountability quite a bit, but I I, I know it's a a real buzz for you to deliver on what you say you will do. It is a real buzzword for me. Um, That word means a lot for me. And I have made people, um, I've also, on the flip side of that, had my circle of friends and my family show up accountable to me as well. Nice. Because what I found myself doing is, um, like Chris said, just having migraines behind, you know, what I said I would do for people and what I said I would do this. And, and people were just letting me down all over the place. Um, and so it's a, it's a two way street for me. Um, and, I'm not going to do it unless I know it's it's giving back. And I don't know how everybody feels about that, but that's just how my life has been. And so with the girls, I don't expect them to give me, empower me and give me that knowledge and, and give me whatever I'm pouring into them. I do expect respect. And I do expect you to, to come. If you say you're going to be there, we're going to meet up. Let's do that. If you say you're going to do this about your life, if you're going to bring up your grades, I'm going to hold you accountable. I want you to hold me accountable as well. So it goes two ways for me. Um, as far as just me being accountable, like you said, it is a big buzzword for me because I'm in service and I can't just not show up. And at work, I can't just not show up if, if there's a test because I know some students need to be read to. I can't just say, oh, well, I don't feel like going today. So I guess I'm just going to stay home. Somebody else have to do it. Get somebody else to do it. I'm not going to do that. I, I, I'm, and I haven't been put in a position, thank God, in the last maybe 10 years that I could do that. And so I guess God was prepping me for service, even in before then he was prepping me for service. So um, I have to be accountable. That's almost my middle name. And so people know if I say I'm going to do, if I say I'm going to do it, and if I put it, even if I don't put it on paper, I'm, I'm going to show up and I'm going to show up as my, as my best self. And it, that can only happen when I got to truly know myself though, and my cans and can'ts. and my do's and don'ts and my wills and won'ts. It <laughs> really happened when I got to learn those and then I could t- could honestly and transparently say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And you can hold me accountable for that. Absolutely. Sean, what about you? Co- accountability. What, what are your thoughts and what's been your experience with that? Let me go and get a piece of this one. Cause I, I, I like this. I like this question. So I'm, I'm a big proponent of your why being so intrinsic that the people around you, unless they're really close, really, really tight inner circle, they can't understand it. When I sit and talk about my why and what changes I'm going through and what I'm doing in the spiritual space, mental space, physical space, nutrition space, everything is quizzical. And I had to grow past the the point where I felt that I needed to explain it to everyone because I had to realize that it's too deep. It's too deep and it's just for me. It's just for me. So um, everyone's why should be that deep. Or hey, I, it, it, I don't have to explain it to you. If you get on the, on the journey, you'll understand in due time. But I, I can't tell you where it is because my why is, is, is to stand that. Because that's a lot of self-talk back and forth that in the deep nights at three o'clock in the morning, 
no one's there with you. Okay. So um, that why is, is, is that deep. When we're talking accountability, I'm going to say that there is no hybrid. There is no external accountability. There is only one accountability and that's internal accountability. Okay. That person that did not show up for Bridget did not show up because of Bridget's accountability is because at first they were not accountable to themselves. They didn't stay true to the commitment that they made Bridget. They failed themselves first. Bridget was just secondary or tertiary down, down the road. So your accountability starts with you. You're the one having that inner dialogue every day, every night, because you're the only one that can feel that and see that and direct your own path. So your accountability is, is within. I am going to get go to the gym, Chris, because this is what Chris does. Not because the, the trainer at the gym is looking for me, and I need to make sure that he sees me here at 5.05 because, you know, he's my accountability partner. No, you got yourself there because you're accountable to yourself and your goal because you know your why. When, when I go to work every day doing things that, that I'm just learning, just like you, Chris, hey, you know, I'm working in oral, in oral health right now. I'm not a dentist, but I tell you what, I am engaged and I'm involved because being true to myself is the utmost goal. And when you're accountable to yourself, then people around you are only witnessing the accountability that you have for yourself when you're accountable to them. Remember that the people around us are just mirrors of ourselves. Around us that we're looking at are just parts of ourselves that, that are reflecting outwardly. So when you're accountable to yourself, only then can you be accountable to other people because you're only seeing how well you're accountable to yourself when you're accountable to, to the other person. So if you made it to the gym on time, if you made it to work on time, if you participated in a gala or whatever the event is, it's because you had the accountability to yourself first and then it showed up by the way you uh, made it to um, the things that you set forward in your life. So well, the, I want to bring, put the last thing on the table because we've, I think, covered quite a bit. So this is the last part I want to talk about. So now we're talking about the transformative part of self-commitment, the personal growth, you know, and you're there. I want to ask this question. How important is community slash social circle in not only achieving that transformation, but then maintaining that as you go forward. Is it a key component? Is it secondary? Is it third? I mean, how important do you see that? And so Sean, I'll let you go first with that. Brian, I find community, um, man, you and community are, are right are right at the top. Um, because we're communal, we're communal beings coming to this world at, at net zero. We're, we're, we're neutral. So whoever is around us is going to pull us either positively or negatively. So um, your community is worth looking into and digging into to see, you know, take, you know, take inventory. Where are my positive uh, reinforcers? Where are my negative reinforcement? Where are my detractors? So if it's friends or family um, that are, you know, on your on your side and they're pushing you forward and they, they are too close to you to help you and bolster you as you're, you know, you know, going through your own ups and downs, having the community member there to catch you to say, hey, how, how's, how's your week going? I know you're working on this. How'd it go? And you can have them that backbone to say, hey, we've got you when you slip. And we're here to cheer for you when you're strong. Um, if you don't take out and weed out those bad actors, then you're going to find yourself falling and slipping and falling and stumbling. Because again, everyone wants you to get right back into that happy medium where they want you to be. So and if, uh, we just can't afford to do that. You know, so pushing people out of your orbit that don't need to be in your close circle is, is, is very important to maintaining, you know, our momentum because like you said earlier this is all about action you have to pour into your cup every day every morning it's me and louise hay you know when i go to bed it's me and louise hay during the day they throw in a little wayne dyer i have to pour into my cup and then i add in people 
that are influential that I can say, hey, this is what I'm going through. This is where I am. And they can say, keep going and give you that support that you need um, to maintain your space because we do not walk through this world in a vacuum. We depend on every person that we see throughout the day because if we did not need them, they would not be here. Thanks for sharing that, John. Bridget, what about you? And I know community is a big piece for you and social circle. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that too. Um, yes, community is a big thing for me. And not just community in which I live in, just the community of schools, um, in the social setting as well, in terms of uh, the environment that I service, um, teens, and that whole community as well. And I serve it not just by knowledge. And you know, I didn't study, I didn't go to college to study um, family and child development. Um, I study sociology and my, so my master's in, but my, my knowledge comes from life and my life experiences and everything that I mentor is nothing that I did not live or, um, it's nothing I heard or read about. And, but I do bring in speakers from the community that have other, that has you no know, wisdom and knowledge of, in other areas that I do not, but the initial, that my initial, um, road to mentoring was <clears throat> excuse me is by my life experiences and um so that's very important in terms of socials hmm that's a good question for me because i'm still trying to figure that out I, my, you know i'm a woman y'all wouldn't understand um and i'm <laughs> try our mind changes <laughs> our mind changes about a different uh, and i and i just turned 60 i don't have a problem saying that and what I what I believed at fifty, I don't believe at I believe in now, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And so I'm learning that a lot of my expectations, a lot of things that I thought about myself and others, they don't apply anymore, if that makes sense. Um, and, and they say a woman has a right to change her mind, and we do, and we do it often. So I'm really built on community, but the way I think of this world and how it's rotating right now, it's, it changes all the time. It's very difficult for me to explain. Sorry. Um, but I am, I'm very committed to um, what I, who I serve and, 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 and not just my girls all girls, not just my teens who I serve, all teens and, and not even just feet to female uh, teenagers, male teenagers as well. So I stay in that little cert, that little realm and I try to make that my little world. Everything else on the outside d it doesn't really move me. Well, I want to go back to what you just said, Bridget, about, you know, women and not understanding that and how you have a right to change your mind. It's a, it's the same way for men, because uh, as we evolve and especially as we get to a certain stage and age in life, uh, all of that hubris we used to have when we were young and what we thought the world was about and what we valued and um, all of those different things really shift for us. And it is a, a, a learning process to start to truly accept that where, from where you thought you used to be and who you thought you were and what you really valued and then now what really matters. Uh, so we we, we, we kind of evolve, maybe see it a little bit differently and maybe what's on the list might be different, mm -hmm. but we have that same experience as we go through that. Now, I know Sean and Chris can definitely relate to that. So Chris, I'm going to come to you and have you wrap this up for us, you know, talking about the, your community, your social circle, and the value of that to stay committed to whatever it is you commit to. And I'm going to say right out the gates, for me, community is everything. Absolutely everything. I mean, I, Bridget, you talked about where you were before versus where you are in the, in the present now. Same goes for me. Um, I didn't know I felt like I felt I, matter of fact, I said a prayer yesterday. I was like, I wish I felt like this 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Well, part of my evolutionary process didn't allow me that. Or maybe I didn't allow me that. But I'm at a point now, and I, Brian, you know this. I came into the year, and one of my goals was was to be become involved in something. Something greater than me. I said that to myself. And, of course, I didn't know what that was. I thought I knew what it was. I, I had an idea what I thought of it was. And now we are totally on a, a totally different track. Um, and clearly that's the beauty of life sometimes is um, you have to just kind of you, you put it. Like I said, we go back to the to how this thing goes. 
starts out as an idea, it turns into a list, then it formulates into a goal. But I know in my heart of hearts that my goal in life, one of my goals in life is to leave whatever it is I'm involved with better than when I found it. So that's really important. That's what drives me. That's what motivates me. Um, I'm about, you know, I've got a tattoo on my arm. I go back to says faith, love, patience, and wisdom. And I'm, I'm at a stage now where I'm comfortable in, I'm, I become more and more comfortable in my own skin every day. So it's easier for me to marry into, because uh, a, 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 I'm actually, I'm going into a whole new community of folks right now. The majority of these people I wouldn't have known from Adam last year, literally. Um, but I clearly, I've put it out there to, um, I put it out there to God saying, Hey, this is what I want. And I need to trust you in certain, you know, certain directions. You're going to guide me and not question it all. There's a time to question things. There's a time not to question things. And I'm, I'm literally starting to, to come to the conclusion that I'm in, I'm, I'm becoming involved in an absolutely amazing community that is, is hell bent on doing some amazing things for young people. And, um, I've been saying this for years. Young people are the future. Actually, young people are now. So I'm, I am literally what lights a fire under me on most days is getting up and being a part of that, being sh sharing what I got. Uh, I'll give you guys, I'll try to keep this brief. Um, dealing with these kids. Uh, and I'm in, like I said, I'm in week, we just finished week three. The first day I met these kids, half of them wouldn't even look me in the eye. I mean, and it kind of freaked me out for a minute. I'm, you know what I mean? But kids are smart. They understood that I came from something different than they was. But I, had, my job initially was to, to get them to see within the differences, the actual similarities. I come from Ohio. You guys are from Waianae. It's country next to the ocean. I come from the country with no ocean, but we still country. And just get, and, and slowly by little by little, I started making inroads to the point where I feel like they trust me now. You know I mean? And that was a goal coming in, but it also requires the ability to understand and to really um, put the community that you're a part of, or you want to be a part of under the microscope and actually understanding what its attributes are while, but also understanding where its warts are because everything has everything has attributes everything has warts and that doesn't mean there's necessarily a bad thing warts are warts you know what I mean you you medicate those you 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 know you do what you do with them but uh, up and until the point uh, Brian you knows I played golf yesterday with uh, one I got invited with one of the folks I'm working with and you look at my post and you'll see what I what I wrote there was anxiety for me because I'm used to playing golf with the same four to eight people. We've been playing for the last 15, 20 years. Right. So there's a certain level of comfort there. And I'm, my whole mind's going like, you know, the, you know, am I going to ruin work relationship through a personal activity with these people? Cause they're like, you know, am I going to be demonstrative on the golf course when I hit a bad shot? You know what I mean? Something like that. And uh, I think that was part of why I woke up yesterday with these damn migraines, right? Because I was like, and I almost canceled. I, there was a part of me who was like, cancel. Just don't go. Just that way you can hide. And uh, brother, do you know I went and played with these people? For one, I played one of my best, had one of my best outings. And secondly, I felt like I knew these people for years. I spent an afternoon with them on a golf course. And I felt like I had been, I, these people were friends of mine for years. We got along so well. Matter of fact, I, at that night, at the end of the night, we had a little text exchange and it's like, we want to invite you over for dinner. We want to do more things with you and stuff like that. And I'm like, wow, talk about huge compliments that people spend one afternoon with you and they get a window into your soul. Because I'm real honest. I mean, you get with me, I'll tell you, the, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. You may not want to hear it, but I'm going to give it to you because I'm just like that. Um, but uh, you talk about walking away with such a rich spirit and feeling and, and, and something that's going to motivate me into the following week and knowing that I got some other allies that I didn't, did I didn't, I, I thought they were allies, but now I'm a hundred percent sure they are allies. 
and that helps to grow the community. At the end of the day, the community is now going to grow exponentially. And I feel like I've actually been giving, I don't know if I want to use the word permission, but I've been given license to do what I'm supposed to do. And I'm, and it excites me. If I may just interject, because Chris hit on something really big on, on this last piece there, um, which I alluded to that, you know, your community does not only mean uh, the people that you see around you. It doesn't mean the, your, your family, people that are dead, their, their, their lives remain in books and in, in tapes and recordings. Um, so you have, you have the ability to interject and build community as well. And that's one thing that I recommend we all do and I do on a daily basis um, because a lot of us didn't grow up with really you know, good, strong influences and definitely not in the places that we're talking about, you know, right now. So, you know, I always go, you know, and, you know, I'm all over YouTube and over the internet to find the voices that we need to hear because community, um, you know, all of us on this um, thread right here uh, come from a very indigenous background, you know, on the plains of Africa. We know um, the power of voice, the power of uh, vibration, the power of drums, the power of music. Um, so we have to put those things in our ear that we need to hear. Um, so um, I would recommend anyone that's listening to make sure that they bolster their community of living people and people that are walking around right next to them with um, the, the thoughts and ideals of others that are have been on that path because there's nothing new under the sun and find those of yourself with so that you're not throwing all of your baggage on the people around you that may or may not you know, be in that space in community and create your own community that is, is a bit broader and that can fill you up in those spaces that other people cannot. And I think that is a, a very key um, to any uh, transformation that you do as a person. That's funny you said that because I, I just made a note. So I was going to close out with this. Uh, and it's in the same line of what Sean was just talking about, because I picked that up in what Chris was saying as well. And that was this. And that was talking about comfort zones and find another room is the term I'm going to use, which is exactly what Sean is saying. If you feel like you're the smartest person in the room or you know everything that's happening in a room or you're super comfortable in a room, guess what time it is? It's time to find another. It's time to find another room, right? Uh, and that's I getting out. Say, of your... I'm the smartest one in my circle. I need to find another circle. Circle, right? <laughs> right? Exactly. So, and Sean, you put it beautifully when you said that it's that that doesn't necessarily just mean people or the immediate community. Finding another room could be a resource, a book, a, the, something at the library, a, a, a YouTube video. So anything that expands your mind and opens you up to new opportunity, new learnings uh, is finding another room. And I think that's a key piece that I want to leave people with as we wrap this up for today, because the biggest parts of today are obviously understanding and doing whatever your why is for self staying committed to that as you work your way through it. And then as those challenges come, motivation, whatever it takes to stay motivated. And one of the best ways to do that is community, social circle. And sometimes that's also finding another room. This has been amazing. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today. Until next time, take care and let's take care of each other. And we'll see you soon. Bye now. Aloha. Thank you.